Welcome to Section 8, Circuit Loading and Demand Factors. Let's review the changes for 2015. Rule 8102, Subrule 1, now requires the voltage drop to be based on the connected load rather than the calculated load. Rule 8102, Subrule 1, Item 2, allows for some equipment, such as motors, to have starting characteristics where the overcurrent devices are intentionally oversized to allow for startup. Rule 28-200, Branch Circuit Overcurrent Protection of Motors, is one such rule. Using the rating of an oversized overcurrent device in your voltage drop calculation would result in circuit conductors unnecessarily too large. Rule 81022, Voltage Drop, allows for some equipment such as motors to have starting characteristics where the overcurrent devices are intentionally oversized to allow for startup. Rule 28200, Branch Circuit Overcurrent Protection for Motors, is one such rule. Using the rating of an oversized overcurrent device in your voltage drop calculation would result in circuit conductors unnecessarily too large. This new subrule and voltage drop table provides users with a quick reference to determine the maximum circuit length for dwelling units. Table 68 can be applied when the total length of the branch circuit or feeder is measured from the supply side of the consumer service to the farthest point of utilization in a general lighting or receptacle circuit. Where the installation does not lend itself to using Table 68, voltage drop calculations should be performed using Subrule 1. The Appendix B note for Rule 8102, Subrule 3, indicates that the voltage drop of lighting and general use branch circuits and dwelling units will meet the requirements of 8102 subrule 1 when the conductor length from the supply side of the consumer service to the furthest point of utilization is less than or equal to the values shown in table 68. Table 68 limits the length of a 15 amp branch circuit with number 14 conductors to 38 meters. The length of the same 15 amp branch circuit would be increased to 60 meters if number 12 conductors were used. Providing a home run that is one size larger will help reduce the voltage drop considerably. Keep in mind that measurement begins at the point of attachment. Table 68 may not be of use if there is a dip service. Table 68 is not intended to apply to branch circuits for refrigerators, washing machines, laundry room receptacles, kitchen counter receptacles, kitchen nook receptacles, or other specific receptacles installed in dwellings on dedicated branch circuits, cooking appliance circuits, and electrical heating circuits. However, the general voltage drop rules in Subrule 1 do apply to these dedicated circuits. 8102 Subrule 4 relaxes the voltage drop requirements for industrial establishments when qualified maintenance staff are available to ensure electrical equipment is provided with voltages within nameplate tolerances. Here is a Section 8 summary. New terminology defines basic, calculated, and demonstrated loads. The voltage drop rules have been expanded a new Table 68 provides quick voltage drop references for lengths of general lighting circuits. Service calculations may be based on demonstrated loads. New demand factor requirements for tankless water heaters, steamers, hot tubs, and similar equipment. Expanded equipment loads to be included in calculations for schools, hospitals, and similar occupancies. And finally, there are expanded equipment loads to be included in the calculations for schools, hospitals, and similar occupancies. Remember, Section 8 does not cover all specific loads and the branch circuits which supply them. For example, you'll find motors in Section 28 and the electric heating loads in Section 62. Rule 8-002, Special Terminology, introduces three common terms and provides definitions. Further information is provided in the Appendix B notes. The basic load may be considered to be the minimum typical lighting and receptacle load found within a building based on its outside dimensions and the type of occupancy. The basic load does not include equipment such as special lighting or other power and electric space heating loads. Rule 8-002, Special Terminology, defines the calculated load as the load determined using the relevant rules of Section 8. 
These load and demand factors are based on generally accepted assumptions and engineering analysis, as well as load data and experience obtained from occupancies similar to those listed throughout this section. 8-002, Special Terminology, defines the demonstrated load as the load obtained from one type of occupancy over a relatively long period of time that can be used to determine the load requirements for occupancies of a similar type and style. Connected load is the total load measured in watts if all equipment is energized simultaneously. The connected load is a term that is used throughout the code but is not specifically defined in this section. Demand factors are based on the concept of diversity throughout an electrical system or circuit and are time dependent. This means the maximum load supplied by a power system may change during the day based upon electrical loads and processes required. Prescriptive demand factors are provided throughout the code in numerous sections. 8106, subrule 6, permits a qualified person to provide a demand factor for motor or air conditioning loads outside the prescriptive requirements in section 28. The qualified person must be acceptable to the regulatory authority and have local knowledge of the electrical installation. 8106 Subrule 10 permits a qualified person to provide feeder and service load calculations based on demonstrated load data. This means historical demand load data from a similar business could be used to determine the service requirements for a similar business. The qualified person must be acceptable to the regulatory authority having jurisdiction and have sufficient knowledge and the historical data required to make a competent design proposal. Here's an example where Subrule 10 might be applied. Rule 8202 Subrule 1 is used to determine the minimum ampacity of a suite feeder and the panel board size. Item 6 is new and is meant to ensure that the service and feeder calculations account for the on-demand loads required by the residential tankless water heaters and similar equipment when supplied by the suite feeder in apartments, townhomes and condominiums. Previous codes provided a generous demand factor which is not suitable for these types of loads. Rule 8204 Schools, 8206 Hospitals and 8208 Hotels, Motels and Similar Occupancies. The 2012 code wording in Item C, Power Loads, has been replaced with wording which includes more electrical equipment typically found in modern schools. Including these loads will result in a more accurate calculation when determining the minimum ampacity for a service or feeder supplying loads in schools, hospitals, and hotels motels. Item D is also new and has been included to account for the large loads that cord-connected electrical equipment can add to an electrical system found in schools, hospitals, hotels, and other similar occupancies. Only loads rated more than 125 volts or 20 amps must be included. These editorial changes were made to either group similar loads within the same rule or to group certain load classifications such as cyclic or intermittent within the same rule. When specific types of lighting are being supplied, Rule 8.212 allows the use of the connected load for determining the feeder size. The name of 8.212 has been changed to reflect the new scope and content. LED lighting technology will result in requests for lower demand factors. That's all for Section 8. Thanks for watching.